Yo, what's up guys, Purple Fire here, bringing you guys a new type of video here today on the channel. We're going to be doing something very cool, something very fun, something you guys would like. It's a Pokemon Platinum only Togepi metronome run. Or should I say, can you beat Pokemon Platinum? We're using only a metronome Togepi. Let me know what you guys think down below. Comment down below what you guys think of this video. Leave a like down below. It's going to be a very, very rough and long challenge. But if you guys enjoy it. Leave a comment down, like I said, of what you guys like to see next. It'd be greatly appreciated. But like I said, it's going to be our only Togepi. We can only use Togepi on this. So let's just get right into the rules here real quick. The rule number one. We can only use Togepi. We cannot use any other Pokemon unless we need it for HMs, etc. Surf, Fly, that Togepi, Togepi cannot learn. Rule number two is that we can only use Metronom. We cannot use any of our other moves. So in theory, this... Challenge will be impossible, but I have given myself max ethers so that I am able to um, just continually give myself PP back. Better than Leperberry and better than hacking in a Togebi that knows recycle, um, harvest and give it recycle, blah, 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 you know, Leperberry. And rule number three, items are allowed. This challenge would not be possible if I cannot use items, so items are allowed to use this, such as potions, etc. like that. But my held iron will always be an oval stone. You may see 99 oval stones in my inventory. It's because in case Togepi uses flings. And I just don't want it to ever stones. My bad. If in case Togepi uses fling. Throw the everstone. It doesn't return it to it. So I have to give it everstone every time. That's rule number three. And one more thing guys. There's going to be a lot of speeding up. Because I did have a lot of battles to go through. I think I've been over 200 battles of fails and victories in combined. So speed up is a thing. I cannot do this without speed up. Because it would make the video hours even a day long honestly i could see it just because i cannot get the right move but with that being said guys let's get right into this video for you guys we have our first battle right here against barry of course also known as pearl with our first ever battle with our metronotopi known as raindrop shout out to raindrop is our togepi's name but yeah it went very well we did go for a god swap then we did get a fat belly drum off hopingly that would actually you know hit them on with a physical attack move, but I don't hit it with a physical attack move. Go for a log plume, get a nice chip damage off, nice burn there as well. And then finally go for one more metronome after the growl, of course, and get a nice fat frenzy plant to take out Barry. No problem at all, but this is just the start of the game. The game gets way harder and harder as we go on. But yeah, let's move on to Barry number two. <laughs> so on to our next rival battle with pearl right here it was a much harder battle of course guys but however we did manage to pull through against pearl here we did manage to like get affected by the starly a lot the starly was a bit of a problem just because it just kept spamming growl and we did get a nice charge beam off there we did get a special attack boost there but the charge beam did not help um the growl did not help just because it just kept lowering our attack constantly and we used to go for these physical like right wood hammer right there would have taken out this pit plot but since we got hit by multiple growls we couldn't take it out but then we managed to just pull out a nice, nice old air cut, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, air cut to take out the Piplup right there. So it's easier said than done, but we managed to take out the Piplup here. But like I said, the next part is the hardest part, which is going to be our first gym battle. Clearly. On to our first right, um, gym battle, of course. We have Leader Rock right here. Leader Rock with very... Uh, tough opponent just because rock types are very powerful against Togepi especially the fact that most of his Pokemon knew the move called Screech if you don't know Screech is a move that does drop my defense by two stages two stages a lot like already said on it dropped my defense by two stages it was just unfortunate right here and we take so much damage from the rock throw it's crazy we get hit by another Screech I'm pretty sure there we go that's minus four defense on us and a rock throw is going to guarantee just do so much damage by hitting on the physical it's not going to do much we have to hit with a grass type move or a water time move to get the quad effective bonus off because that's what's going to help us win this fight unfortunately we did lose against this um brock the first time right here we lost against we didn't use any potions i wanted to save my potions but when we got into the next battle right here um we did manage to get lucky and get ice balls ice balls is very huge because when using ice ball it builds up power and constantly use that same move constantly but we managed to take out the Geo dude, and we also managed to also take out the Onyx due to the Ice Ball. And finally, we got lucky against the Cranios, and we managed to get a nice old Shaco to take it out completely. Which is why it was so much fun just to, like, get that much luck. Because I did lose to Rock 10 times, I'm pretty sure. A lot of times, but I'm glad we managed to beat Rock finally. Next up here, we have Commander Mars of Team Galactic. The first Commander. I want to keep calling her Admin, but I'm going to call her Commander. Commander Mars 
had a huge threat on him, which was right there. The Zubat that uses Toxic. The Zubat that uses Toxic was a very big threat, because as you may know, Toxic is the move that builds up more damage as the turns pass by. And if you don't have any antidotes, you are guaranteed to die no matter what, no matter how many times you heal against Toxic. Unfortunately, I did not go in full healed or have any antidotes, but then I rushed back, got some more antidotes, got some heals, and then we were ready to take on Mars again. This time I got rid of the poison. The poison was very a huge threat. Any status move in general was a massive threat to me. I can't let status move get the bell on me, so I have to buy any sort of heals just to stop that happening, because I'm only forced to use Metronome. I can't do anything else, so I'm not guaranteed to land a hit on the Pokemon before the Toxic kills me. Most of the 9 out of 10 of the times, I will not even land a hit. I will go for like a stat boosting move or a healing type move, which is not useful against people that keep hitting me or trying to keep status in me. So I had to go back, buy some Antos, and then we finally defeated Mars easily peasily. Ah yes, Gardenia. This is the second type gym leader we're fighting. Gardenia is the grass type gym leader. Her team, well, wasn't much of a huge threat. I can say we did beat her the first try, I can let you know not much. However, the gym trainers were terrifying. The gym trainers had moves such as Leech Seed. They know Leech Seed just keeps draining the Pokemon itself no matter how many times, no matter how you can, you can't get rid of Leech Seed unless you swap out. And I cannot swap out. I only have to use Togepi. So I'm stuck getting Leech Seeded by the trainer Pokemon. But we managed to defeat them by getting some powerful fire and flying type moves to get rid of them. But for the gym battle here, we managed to get Conversion 2, which changed us into the poison typing which allowed us to eat more Magical Leaves. We know Magical Leaves is the grass type move and it's not very effective against Poison typing, which was huge in this run. That was huge, that allowed us to eat hits, use less potions, and when if a crit hits me, I won't take as much damage. And thankfully, we managed to beat the Rose Raid and the Turtwig without having taken any damage or losing at all, just because of conversion. However, later on, we do get conversion again and change our typing, but by the time it gets to that part, we're at the, already at the end of the battle, so there's no problem there, we just take out this Cherim right here, this Cherim is not much of a threat, and Cherim's out of the fight, and we managed to defeat Gardenia with no problem at all. The easiest gym leader I could say that was in this entire playthrough. Now we have the second commander of Team Galactic, we have Commander Jupiter, they're based off planets by the way, I don't have no clue, but Commander Jupiter was definitely a tough opponent, we did manage to get some love, we did manage to get some hacks in this playthrough uh, part battle right here. We did manage to get a sand attack off against the skunk tank which allowed it to miss a lot of its moves and thankfully it did because the night slash, I did lose to this one a lot of times. Night slash would crit me all the time and I would just lose to it but thankfully for the sand attack hitting it did miss a lot of moves and we did manage to take out Jupiter very easily and that's pretty much it. Just having that hacks allowed us just to get through that battle completely and very easily. Once I got to this gym with Fantina, the third gym leader, the ghost type gym leader, I thought it was going to be the easiest time of my life. Unfortunately, my luck with using Metronome was very, very unlucky. Because due to the fact that the trainer Pokemon would no curse, they were no curse, which takes away my life within four turns, and I can't switch out and I can't get rid of it, was very painful. And me constantly, constantly, constantly getting ground type, normal type, and fighting type moves was a pain. Me constantly again, we did lose to Fantino of course because she did get a crit on me, but here we are taking her again. The main problem was her trainer Pokemon. I did manage to take her out on the second go, but her trainer Pokemon, I put the trainers in the gym, their Pokemon, I lost them about four, five, even ten times due to the fact that they all knew Curse and just kept taking all that energy off, um, life force off me. And they also knew Confuseray. Confuseray would hit, I would hit myself so many times with Confuseray, and some of them even had like Thunder Wave on them, which was just. It was just constant hacks and I could not get around it. That's the only problem with this game. If I just get like locked in by like Leech Seed or Curse, I just completely can't do anything unless I guaranteed the first kill, which is terrifying and to know that I just can't swap out because it's a Togepi only run. So that's the only main problem with the game. Also Toxic, but we do have cures for that. But we cannot get rid of Leech Seed or Curse because we don't like to swap out. But we did manage to defeat Fantina here easily. God, Barry's here for the third time. We're here battling Barry again. And unfortunately, we did lose again against Barry. This is the first time we lost against Barry. Barry's a bit... It's just getting constantly created. That's the problem with this. Me spamming Metronome, waiting for a move to get an action move to hit, is increasing the chance of him getting a chance to hit me with a critical move. And me spam healing doesn't help either, because this print plot right here, there you go, right there, just crits me completely. And I can't do anything about it, because it just constantly crits, so I have to redo it. 
hoping that I get better moves. Don't let them to crit me. Hoping they don't just got any crit chance. That's the main problem. But we managed to take him out the second time. Him and his Rosalia. His Rosalia is a huge threat. Even though we didn't get to him yet, we did take out the Ponytail Staravia Primplot pretty easily. His Rosalia is the main threat. Due to the fact that Rosalia is a mon that can get Leech Seed and a Giga Draining move. Or Mega Drain, whatever you want to call it. Leech Seed, like I said, is constant on the field unless you swap out. And we're not allowed to swap out. He just keeps Leech Seeding me and then Mega Draining me. Constantly just taking all the health away. And when I heal or use the Mac Ether, he just gets free heals and he's just going to keep going. And he also paralyzed me there as well. So I can't do much about that. I have to just wait for the moment I can use Metronome and get a lucky move. Like a Psychic type move. Fire type move, blind type move, or any type of move that can do massive damage to Rosalia. But we did manage to take it out and get Barry out of the way. This is one of the most painful things in this playthrough is to deal with Paralysis, Burn, Leech Seed, and any spell Pokemon that can heal up themselves. It's really annoying, but we managed to get past Pearl for the third time. Alrighty, we have the most scariest and the thing I feared the most completely in this entire playthrough is the fight against Maylene. I did lose to her. I was level 47. I was just getting half hit over half by a drain punch from a Meditite. I couldn't do nothing much about it. I kept resetting, trying to keep going, trying to see if I can just like get like a low roll, heal up, do something, use a metronome, get paralysis, but it was not working. This thing went for a fake out, then trained for a drain punch. So it just kept like chipping all my health away. A drain punch heals the Pokemon and it's perfected against me. So I had no other option. But to lose this battle here and go off and grind to a higher level. So we do come back here against Maylene right here at a high level. We're here at level 60 so we can eat a Drain Punch. There we go. Drain Punch does not do over half this time. So this is where we make the comeback here. We do get the heals off. We need these heals a lot just so we can eat hits. Because these guys keep healing. It's just the luck of the metronome here at this point. Trying to get the good moves so we can just bop this thing. We are double its low and we're still taking mad damage. That shows how weak Topia really is. But thankfully we just eat hits. But a lot of these Pokemon, Lucario and Metro, of course, just keep getting crits, especially Lucario. Constantly getting the crits with the Drain Punch. The Drain Punch crits are huge because it keeps healing back all the damage I did to it. So it's just a long, drawn-out battle till one of us gets... Oh, me, of course, gets the luckier hit on the on the Lucario. But thankfully, we managed to beat it, and we managed to get our third badge, which was definitely the most challenging gym battle I ever done. On to the fourth battle with Barry. This was a very tough one. Just due to the fact that he had a lot of Pokemon, these Pokemon were much higher level. But we did manage to take out Barry the first try. Even though the fact that he did have, he did have the Rosalia. Rosalia was a very long time stalling mod. It just kept on leech seeding me, giga draining me, and then paralyzing me. So it was just waiting for hacks to just kick in. There you go, just magically dead the leech seed right there. He just kept sapping all my health when I just have to wait for the right moment that I get a right move. I can only do one metronome, then I have to heal up with Moo Moo Milk. So it's just one metronome, Moo Moo Milk. But eventually, I do get the powerful move just to take this Pokemon out. There we go, right there, taken out completely with a side beam. Boom. So that was easy done. It's easy said than done. But later on, when it becomes a Rose Red, it learns Giga Drain and it becomes more of a threat, which was it's just really hard. It just gets really hard from here on out. <laughs> There we have is Pressure Wing. Now the fourth gym leader, very cool looking gym leader. My, honestly, my favorite gym leader within the Sinner region. Pressure Wing is definitely a strong person with Gyarados, Floatzel, and Magsire. It did take me out right there because I didn't go for the Outrage. Any type of lock on move that is super effective against the opponent fighting is very risky because then I can keep using that move for at least four to three, two to three turns. And that's plenty of time for them to use damage move amazing. I'm still a Togepi. Still hit me very hard, but we did manage to take out Crash Wing on this the second turn. The Gyarados was very annoying, he kept doing a lot of damage and flinching me for cool. However, we did get like a Feather Dance off and high defense off so we could eat hit. But then the Quagsire comes in, Float 2 was not a problem, we pick up Float 2 very easily. Quagsire is just a score point at this point because he just kept putting me to sleep with Lord and he just relied on me on just waiting for me to get any sort of good move. We did get the Browse on it, which did help a lot, but the Yawn was definitely a problem because he just kept putting me to sleep and damaging me. This either I heal up. And then use awakening to do a metronome, not get anything at all, and then it's just the same problem with repeat until I get a good move to use against that choice. But other than that, it was pretty easy rather than just get critted or whatever. So yeah, it's pretty much crash awake's done. Right we here we have we are taking on the first team galactic boss 
Cyrus. Cyrus is a very powerful and powerful trainer. We did manage to take out the Sneasel with a frenzy plot nicely there. And there, here it comes, the confusion, the confusion hack. Toby constantly hits himself in confusion, which is painful. I just can't, I just hate confusion so much in this game. But we did fire off a powerful head match to take out the goal back there. Then it's just the Murkrow left. Murkrow is not much of a problem. We just managed to like get enough. Um, good move from the Metronome. We did get good luck here. Sometimes we missed, sometimes we didn't. But in this run, I'm pretty sure we did, did do very well. I managed to take out the Murkro easily. Nothing too much of a problem. It's just the confusion, which is the main problem. Me getting confused, just me wasting a turn, taking damage, and they're free to hit me. And then next turn, I just have to heal, and they're still free to hit me. It's such a like that. It's just a time spot at that point. So it'd be better if I just got the good move right off the bat and not getting confused at all. It would make the battles faster. But at that, but either way, that was a very easy and quick battle for me. Now it's time for Barry 5! Yay! Woo! Barry 5 was definitely a problem. He did have this annoyingly Heracross right here. Heracross would definitely hit me with the Brick Break. At least just under half HP. He was hit me for like, I think a maximum of 66 damage. So I had to keep healing till I was at least above 66 health to take the hit. But unfortunately, we did lose the first battle against Barry. Barry just kept, had a powerful team, especially that Rosalia at the end. The Rosalia as well is so annoying, like I said before in the previous, in the previous battle against Barry. Rosalia knows Grass Whistle, or Sleep Power at 1 of the 2, Leech Seed, and Giga Drain. So all this is just sapping my health, put me to sleep, just constantly do damage. And the risk of getting hit by a crit, which I just lost there by a crit. But here, like I said, back here, against, against Barry again. Hopefully not dying to any soul crits. Managed to take out the... Heracross very easily and Star after as well. We're on the Rose Road, of course. Him having Solar Beam, Leech Seed, Giga Drain, Sleep Power, just, it's just havoc. But at the end, we managed to take out very quickly, very easily. Then we had this Empoleon as well, which is a very long stall at battle because we weren't hanging it for super effective moves. We, we were hanging it with Steel Type and Water Type moves. I'm like, what's going on? Let's use, just do the Electro. Just use an Electro Type move to take it out. Just use an Electro Type move to take it out. But eventually, we got the burn on it. It was just sapping his health away constantly and constantly. It was pretty much. It's just a way battle till we got a good move. That battle, I'll tell you what, took me three minutes long speeding up. Imagine that. Three minutes long speeding up that battle. How long of a battle was that? Crazy. But with that being said, we beat Barry. Let's move on to the sixth gym. There we are here taking on the dad of Rook. The seventh, sixth gym leader, Byron. Byron was definitely powerful. His Magneton would definitely did put up a fight against me. Due to the fact that he knew Metal Sound. Metal Sound would lower my special defense a lot. And then the Thunderbolt would just do more damage constantly. And me not even getting any fire type moves, fighting type moves at all is just a pain. I really wish I did get those uh, moves. I really wish that these moves actually like work. Because back in the Fantina gym, I would constantly get fighting type moves. I'm like, where are they now? It's just a waste. It's just, like I said, this whole process of the Metronome Togepron is just a stall phase of me getting good moves. Hopefully land it. But there you go. It took me out with a crit. But we're not done there, of course, guys. We're going to be going right back into it right here against Byron again he goes for the metal sound which does make Thunderbolt hit me very hard but we managed to get like defend order iron defense so we can eat hits then we get finally we finally got a flamethrower against the magneton took it out then it's the Steelix hit me fat with the earthquake but since we did have iron defense we we're eating those earthquakes massively it did get those crits however these cheeky crits but it's just this waiting point till we actually got a move that can hit Steelix properly so, and, but it wasn't much of a problem, it was just a waiting game, I guess, against Felix. Then he managed to just kill itself. Then we have the Bastion, of course. If we just got one ground or fine type move, we could have took out instantly. However, we did get a fat Thunderbolt after using a nasty plot to take out the Bastion from half HP, which is crazy. Definitely a long battle because still has a lot of resistance, but later, in later gens, they lose those resistances. But it's definitely a problem now in these gens to be it with just using Togepi and relying on Metronome. Now we have Baby Cyrus here, Baby Cyrus. His name is Saturn, of course. We are here taking on Saturn, the B-Tech of Cyrus. Saturn was not much of a problem. We did manage to beat him first try, unlike the other ones. We did lose to the other ones, but we did manage to beat Saturn first try. It was not a problem. Go back was not a problem. Toxtro did have a lot of problems just because he knew a fine type move, but it was nothing I could worry about. As long as I could get like a fat hit off, like right there, we just got the fat. It's like the luckiest ever psychic to kill a quad effective a toxic rope, which was amazing. I'm glad we got that psychic. We definitely needed that after that long, painful run of not landing any good super effective moves, but we take out Sand very, very easily. But next off, we're up to Lake Verity to take on Mars, of course. Mars is another commander. We're here rematching Mars. She wants a rematch. Of course, her Golbat, the previous known as Zubat, has toxic, so we just had to use our antidote just to get that off. 
but most we did beat first try this time we didn't have that much of a problem we're definitely very high level we're level 70 by this point of the game we're there at level 40 but nothing much we got defend all that helps us a lot just to boost our defense nothing much really happened but we just stalling out the point of me trying to get at least a good move to hit him probably obviously had fake out of course so i just just took it we got reflect so we can eat hits but nothing much there we just get, actually get good damage move and we end it with a reversal which is a fighting type move against mars is perugly so with that being said we have to make our way to snowboy city to take on candace on to Sinnoh's north part candace the ice type gym leader is here we have taken on candace of course you know guys we obviously lost to candace it wouldn't be a purple fire video here if we didn't lose candace was definitely a tough opponent she did have a very very strong team just to fight against candace was just Oh, the bomber's the only focus blaster. Bomber's the only focus. I had to rely on the focus blast misses just to heal up and then go for a metronome. We did manage to put it full to sleep. We have a zap kind of hoping I get paralyzed, but it was already asleep. Nothing much I could do there though. But it's just a just a stall because this focus blast is doing so much damage to me. But we did lose because this Pokemon did get a crit on me, of course. As you may know, all Pokemon they just get crits on me. Except this time, we went for a self-destruct and I just got really upset. But here we are again. Self-destructs are the bane of these playthroughs. Just once, like, let's say you get to, like, a lost Leaf or member, lost Pokemon. You go for, like, self-destruct. It's just game over. You have to restart. And it's just a pain. There's, like, only, like, a couple of moves that can just kill you. But this power time was a pain. Just constant healing. Metronoming. Hoping to get a good move. Look how long it's, look how long how his health stays in the same place for so long. It's just me stuck healing and not getting a good attack move. Frost Life was definitely a pain because most moves didn't hit her. We did get a lot of normal fight and ground time moves against these guys, which I hated. And he kept getting the special D drop on me, but we managed to eat all the hits and take out this Frost Life very easy. We we'll say easy, but I did with a long duration. And then we had the Sneasel come in and we just took out with a feint attack and a body slam. Use its own move against itself. But Candace, there you go, done dusted. Ghost stats are definitely a problem. I thought they were going to be easy, but they're much harder to beat than expected. So here we are in Cyrus's headquarters, Cyrus's lab, Galactic Bill, whatever you want to call it. We, he has three Pokemon. He has a Sneasel, Honchkron, and a Crobat. Sneasel and Honchkrow were not much of a problem. We got rid of them in pretty much one move. The Crobat was a problem though because Crobat is very fast mod, very strong mod. He has very type diverse moves. He has Poison Fang, Air Cutter, and also had Confuse Ray. Confusing me, make me not land moves, poisoning me, making me waste Anodos and critting me so I can heal up. It's just a lot of factors come in, but we do take out with a Lava Plume and then the Honchkrow comes in. We use Metronome and we take out with a nice solid Ice Beam. So Honchko and Sneasel weren't a problem, it was just Crobat was longing at the battle because I wasn't landing my moves, nor nor with the fact that Confusion was hitting me as well, so which made it harder for me to land my moves. That's about it here, that's the only problem we had with um, Cyrus right there, but we beat him and went on to the next battle. Then we have your boy B-Tech Cyrus here protecting him, trying to like be like Cyrus, listen yo, saying you're not even worth showing this part of the video to, but we did defeat him easily peasily. But this was a very, very interesting battle here guys, this was a very... Reliant battle on Barry, of course. I needed Barry to take out most of the mons and not have them focus on me. I can eat hits better than Barry could, but at the same time, I wanted Barry to take out some of the mons because he did have very strong Pokemon against the team. He had Rapidash and he had Heragos, Super Fangs, and like Perugly. Also, his Gung Tank. We had Empoleon as well. I really needed his help in this battle because without his help, I could not defeat this battle. There was a lot of hacks in this battle, a lot of smoke screen, a lot of confusion. It's annoying that these Pokemon get these moves. It just makes it such a pain to do. But eventually, me and Barry, or me and Pearl, should I say, have just successfully beaten Mars and Jupiter very easily. Even though Barry, the best thing about this battle is that Barry does use six, six months, five months, five months. It's five months, all five with months, which is good because that means there's less focus on me. I'm glad that he uses five months. They only use one mon. Then everything will be focused on me. It'd be either like getting one metronome like every like five turns or something like that. It'd be pretty intense and pretty hard to do without Barry's help. Like you see there, he just takes out most of the mods. Shout out to Barry, he's a legend for helping me in this battle. But we did manage to beat these guys very easily as well. It's time for finally to fight against Cyrus. Cyrus, the most powerful leader of Team Galactic here. We're fighting in distortion world in order to get to Giratina. We have to get Cyrus out of here because we want to stop creating this new world. But Cyrus does have the one of the strongest team in the game. Honestly, I think like it, second to Cynthia. He has Gyarados, he has a Honcho, the Weavile, he's a Crobat, and he also has a Houndoom. These are very powerful mods, especially against Togepi. They all hit very hard against Togepi, and most of them crit, flinch, and even hacks Togepi. As you saw there, Weavile, Weavile did freeze my Togepi, which is huge. Weavile does have a high crit shot with Night Slash, and he's a very hard physical attacker. He has a Crobat, which can poison, confuse Ray me, etc. Like that. All that stuff can just stop me from trying to uh, use metronome 
And the more that they keep doing this, the more high potions I have to waste. And the more high potions I use, the higher chance they crit me equals to more high potions I use. Barely gives me a chance to even use metronome at all. And then if they poison me, I have to use a antidote item, example, and then I have to use a high potion just to clear it off. And that's a lot of work trying to clear off just an antidote and I just never get to attack. It's a very powerful team, and Cyrus was definitely cha definitely challenging. I did lose quite a few bits to him here and there, but we managed to overcome and defeat him. We are here with the final gym leader, gym leader Volknar. Finally, we finally reached the 8th gym, level 8 at the 8th gym. Pretty much nothing else really happens about other than Jolten really hitting us hard. It goes for Charge Beam. As you know, Charge Beam is a move that boosts its attack, has a chance to boost a special attack, and Charge Beam is a threat because if I don't kill this thing with Metronome, he's just going to keep hitting me with Charge Beam and do mad damage to me and he keeps building up that special attack. He was the main problem this entire fight, honestly, other than the Raichu as well. I think Raichu did contain Focus Plus, but he did miss the Focus Plus, but we But we do take out the Jolten with a fat head smash, of course. Then the Raichu comes in with the Focus Plus, which does so much damage. So we have to rely on the miss and then, like, it got a crit on the first one. And it still lands the Focus Blast off the Kinesis, which is crazy. Who does that? But we do take it out, but Electra is not a problem at all because he doesn't have a fighting type move on it. Get a nice energy pool, take it out completely. Then Luxury comes in and we just body Luxury with a ring out somehow. But that's pretty much Volkner done. Done, we got all the badges and we're on to the Elite Four. We are here with Final Barry. Barry was an interesting person. We didn't manage to get through the Star Raptor and Heracles very easily. Not as... <laughs> But that wasn't the problem in his team. Last time they were the problem. They were doing mad damage, but this time they're not the problem, of course. This time it's the Snorlax. Look how fast the battle goes. This is how long I had to fight the Snorlax. Me and the Snorlax were just lasting so long. Look how long. This is like mm, times 10 million speed, dude. Look how fast this battle is moving. This was the majority of the battle. If I didn't cut this out, this would be like another 7 minute long clip of me fighting the Snorlax, probably. Honestly, I guess so. But that's pretty much it. We do take out the Snorlax at the end because it just kept spamming rest. And we didn't do enough damage. But eventually we got all the stat boost in the world to do it, but then eventually this Rosary comes in. Yep, Rosary, you know what Rosary does? Sits here and grosses me and Giga drains me. When are just sitting here, grass draining, uh, grass draining, Giga draining, and, whist and just keeps whistling me. And then eventually we take out this um, Rose Raid. And finally, the last duel of his team, which was then Polion. And Polion does hit me with a fat brine that drops me down to such low HP. We do get Aquarine for his um, constant HP, but this Empoleon, like I said, our luck is very trash in this game, and we cannot land a single good move, but eventually we do take out the Empoleon and do defeat Barry without even losing once. So we're on to the actual Elite Four members. Let's go, baby! We are here taking on the first Elite Four member, Aaron. We didn't have much problem with him. We actually beat him first try, fun fact. The only problem was with the Heracross and the Drapion a bit. The rest of the ones are pretty easy. We'll get into it, what happened. Dra um... Aaron has a very strong team of bug types, and the fact that we managed to like take out this Heracle with the Blastman here is the best part here. We managed to get a Metronome Rollout, which hits the Vespicune for four times. So does the, so does the Yan Mega, and so does the Sizzle go down. We took out three Mons with just Rollout. That's how busted that Metronome was. That was our really good luck there. But here we had the Drapion, we just had to keep stalling it because he kept poisoning us. Then we got a Transform. Did we lose the luck here? I don't know. I don't think we lose the run because we transformed. But I don't think this counts, but when we just took out Drapion with ourselves, we just did the Spider-Man meme against them. So, I don't know if that counts as a loss. We're still Togepi. I guess that counts as we still going through with the game. But, with that being said, we beat the first member of the Elite Four. Here we have, in my opinion, the hardest one out of the whole, um, I guess, <laughs> Elite Four members. Bertha was definitely a challenge for me. Bertha had a lot of strong ones. Most of the Pokemon were working against Grass and Water types. And I didn't, just didn't get any Grass type moves. Literally no Grass type moves. This repair gave me a lot of trouble. He just kept living and we're not getting any moves and he just keeps healing. I don't know, every time we got it low, we just kept healing, and we had Glyco. we did manage to, like, tuck it out, I'm pretty sure we hit with the Avalanche, and he takes it out, but the whole problem was, like, we didn't get any luck at all, but we managed to defeat Bertha, of course, Bertha was semi-okay, definitely the hardest out of all the Elite Four members we took on here, but it's just the fact that we didn't get any good rolls on our Metronome, we just needed grass type moves consistently throughout, I don't think we have gotten one grass type move throughout the entire thing, I don't know, I, I didn't rewatch it properly, I guess, but it was... Just annoying not getting any moves, but we didn't lose to a beat at first try as well. We have the most hottest train in the whole Elite Four. We have Flint here. We actually did get pretty lucky against Flint. I was terrified. Literally terrified of his Infernape. However, in the, against this battle against this Houndoom, we managed to get a Metronome for Barrier. We got a Barrier Metronome, which helped us a lot. It boosted our special um, defense, so this Infernape could not touch us at all, which was great and fantastic. The Flaring couldn't touch us. 
And it was just amazing that we could just like eat it. I don't think if we got if we didn't get the berry, I think this infinity would be doing mad damage. Just close combat me to death. But this um Flareon right here does go for the overheat and lose his special attack. So we just eat all the hits now. So Flareon's just out of the way. And Magmora comes in and we just have an easy time because he's not doing enough damage with the flamethrower. So we just have to just stall it out as much as we can. He does get the burn, of course, but we do have full restores on us. But we get the rollout and take it out, and then we get another rollout. Takes out the rapid dash. Rollout's OP against fire types. That's twice now we have rollouts against Elite Four members, and they work very well. I love rollout. It's such a strong move the way it just builds up power. Amazing move. Aye aye aye, Lucian did. Lucian. Sir Lucian himself. Lucian was definitely a powerful opponent to fight against. Lucian had a lot of annoying things, especially Mr. Mime has set the reflect and light spread. This guy later would constantly drain punch me, so I just had to keep stalling it out of the drain punches. I'm pretty sure he had like 10 drain punches, but we did get a brave bit to take it out. Alakazam does so much damage with a focus block. It just completely wipes me out. Glad we got a heat wave on it, and we just come out, just destroy this Mr. Mime here. But Espeon's a huge problem as well here. Espeon kept going for Psychic, dropping my special defense, hoping for a crit. We didn't, he didn't get no crit at all. That was my luckiest run ever of this game. And we managed to take out the Espeon once it ran out of Psychics. And then eventually... Once we took out the Espeon, we went to Bronze and we got a first turn Heat Wave. That was incredible how we got a first turn Heat Wave against this mod. Definitely a scary opponent. It's definitely Alakazam just needed... This Al if we were like low low by just a bit more, Alakazam would have taken, him out, took him me out with the Focus Ball. And that would have been game over for me there. I couldn't do nothing much. I probably have to use x but that's how powerful Alakazam really is. Oh. My. Goodness. Thymphia is... The hardest champion ever, dude. Oh my goodness. I thought I had to use X items against her. I think I counted it all. I counted it. I did 19 attempts against Cynthia. Cynthia is the most painful person. Let's start off with the Spirit Tomb here. This Spirit Tomb, I always go, went for normal and fighting type moves against this thing. Could not do anything about it. Oh my god. The main problem was the Togekiss and Lucario and Garchomp. Those three kept critting me non-stop in my, all my other runs. They just kept critting me after critting me after critting me after critting me after critting me. Just complete crit, just completely critting me every time the runs. And then suddenly this run came up and we suddenly, finally actually beat her after 19 attempts. Oh my god, Cynthia is so powerful. Please love me. But Cynthia is powerful. Oh my god, Godchomp kept landing crits on me. Lucario kept landing crits on me. Togekiss kept landing crits on me. They all kept landing crits on me. But in this run, they barely land any crit. They literally went for like probably like one crit at most. And that's it. That's all that happened. That one crit. This is my luckiest run ever. I'm glad this run is over. So we have finally defeated Champion Cynthia. And we are finally making our way oh, to the Hall of Fame. <sighs> well, guys. This was a very difficult, stressful run of Pokemon. Platinum, Metronome, Togepi, only. Oh my goodness, what a run this was. You guys did watch all the way through the video. Thank you so much for putting time into this video. This was a very long video, very time consuming video. In fact, I would like to show you detail. I think at the end of this little clip here, probably we'll see a detail of the time. Remember guys, I want I want to do more of these. This, this was, even though it was stressful, even though I did get angry a lot. If you saw my tweets on Twitter, I would say I was ranging, I was doing this. So it was very stressful. Let me know what you guys thought of it. Let me know if you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to see any more, this is a bit of an impossible challenge, I guess, but it's possible. Nearly impossible, I guess you could say. But let me know what other Pokemon you'd like to see and let me know what kind of moves that you want to run. So let's say like Magikarp, Splash only run. Imagine if that was possible. Uh, imagine. But let me know what else, what else you guys want to see. Leave a like, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, it would be greatly appreciated. But like I said, thank you all so much for watching this video. Share it out, retweet it, put a lot of effort into it. But this is it, just range up on screen right here. Well, Legend Ranger up here. And we spent 43 hours in the game, which is crazy, dude. Leave a like down below. Subscribe if you're new. Be greatly appreciated. But with that being said, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.